Hello and welcome to a beginner's guide to frigate PvP in the online role-playing game EVE Online. In this video, I'm going to bring you up to speed on the basic principles of solo and small gang PvP in this game and get you started on your way to becoming a real menace to pilots everywhere throughout the skies of New Eden. Okay, let's get started as always with the absolute basics. We're going to break this video down into five main categories. Where to go to find PvP and where to base your operations, finding PvP fits and getting your ship fit correctly, learning to pick your targets and how to identify threats, mastering the art of PvP combat as an EVE pilot and learning to PvP as a free to play character. Now, where do we go to get fights? Well, in the world of New Eden, the answer is literally anywhere. Yes, even in high sec. However, for this video, I'm going to be focusing on low security space and specifically factional warfare. Now, I know very little about factional warfare itself, other than that the elite thing to do seems to be sitting in a quiet system whilst AFK at a plex and being mind-numbingly bored. But there are more than just AFK pilots in factional warfare. There's also pirates, roaming small gangs and solo capsuleers looking for fights, and in fact many of the factional warfare militia are not AFK and will actively search for fights as well. There are two areas for factional warfare, the Amar Minmatar factional warfare space, which is mainly Metropolis and the Bleaklands regions, and is the quieter of the two factional warfare areas, and therefore better for plexing than it is for fighting. Then there's the Galente Caldari factional warfare, which is both Lone Trek and the Black Rise regions, however Black Rise is where most of the PvP is to be found. Where to base yourself is up to you. If you can't make up your mind, put a jump clone in both areas. You can spend one day in Black Rise and the next in Metropolis. For new bros looking for information on jump clones, you can find everything that you'll need in-game over at the mailing list, New Bro Help. So before you get out there and start blowing things up, you're going to want to have worked out a good way of fitting whatever it is you are going to fly. And as I have mentioned in other videos, one of the best ways for you to do this is going to be going to Z Killboard to get your fits. Now this is, I think, the best way of finding fits that are updated with the current meta in EVE. And today I'm going to go over a few of the things that we can do to sort of try and find maybe a capable fit and work out what that fit can actually kill. So let's say that we are maybe a Galente Alpha clone or maybe just a character with a lot of Galente skills and we want to go and fly a Tech 1 Galente frigate. We can then go to this search bar here and we can type in the Incursus which is of course a Tech 1 Galente frigate. We'll go to the page for the Incursus here uh, and Zika board is taking a minute to load here. All right, Zika board is being a little bit slow today, uh, but let's go to the monthly top for the Incursus here, and we can see the top 10 characters for the current month using the Incursus. Uh, but let's say that we decide that this is maybe not a great sample size, because you can see it's only the 8th of March here, so it's kind of early-ish in the month, we might decide, okay, maybe we want to go and take a look at the top for February instead. Uh, so let's go back to Feb, and the top character for February was XX Marinez XX or something. Um, so let's open up his page here, and we will go to his losses to go and grab an Incursus. Uh, so here we go, an Incursus. 
and let's take a look at his fit. Uh, okay, so you can see he was using neutron blasters, a uh, afterburner, a scram and a web, AAR, so pretty standard. Uh, and we can see what killed him here as well. Uh, it looks like he was killed, I think he was actually killed solo by this Kestrel. Probably he killed this Vicaro guy first, um, and then, but I, I think the Kestrel has probably come in a bit later. It was probably a solo loss, I'd imagine. Uh, maybe this was like a dual web Kestrel, uh, and he was able to stay out of range. That would make sense, actually, because he has got Null loaded here. Uh, but let's go back to his page, and let's see what he was actually killing solo with the Incursus. Uh, so this is going to give us an idea of what the fit is actually capable of. Uh, so we've got a slicer here, we have a hook bill here, uh, and we have another Incursus. Let's see if there's if that was Incursus v Incursus. Uh, so yes, so you did use the Incursus to kill this slicer. So we can see, all right, if we are if we manage to catch a kiter, we can definitely uh, face melt him with this Incursus. Uh, this hookbill was killed by a comet, uh, but this Incursus, a rail Incursus, was killed by the blaster Incursus. So there you go. You might think, all right, if I find a rail Incursus using my blaster Incursus, I should be able to theoretically kill him. Um, so that is a way that we can sort of see how capable uh, Marinex's fit is here. Now, some of the other things that we can do with Z Killboard, let's say that we have skills for maybe a particular weapon type. So maybe like the small focused focused beam lasers. Uh, oh, I haven't spelled that quite correctly. Focused. Here we go. So we can go to the page for this module and then we can see all of the different uh, ships that were fitting this module. So we could say, hmm, okay, maybe we want to try flying a succubus, maybe we want to try flying uh, a slicer, or maybe an ex executioner. So we could go and see these fits, and then again, you know, we could go to the monthly top then for the succubus, we could go to the monthly top for the slicer, or for the executioner, and just repeat the same thing that we did previously. So this is a way that we can really start to, to use Z Killboard to uh, pinpoint exactly what fit we want to find and find out how capable that fit is and what it can actually kill. When you are out there roaming the skies and looking for fights, there are a few things that you're going to want to be on the lookout for and hopefully managing to avoid. One of the nastier traps that some players will employ is sitting a frigate or cheap destroyer in a medium plex along with a recon, a special cruiser class hull which cannot be detected by your directional scanners. You then head into the plex thinking that you're fighting a lone frigate or destroyer only to find you're hopelessly outgunned and most likely have no chance to escape as most recon bait is a curse which can instantly newt out most frigates or destroyers. There are similar tricks certain players use with cloaked ECM frigates like the Griffin Navy Issue or the Kitsune but these are far less common. To avoid these traps it's probably best just not to fight frigates in the medium plexes unless you are 100% sure that they are in fact alone. In terms of picking targets, as a blanket rule for new players, if you just stick to fighting tech 1 only, you're going to stand a decent chance in most fights. However, you can get further intel on specific targets by using third party tools such as Pirate's Little Helper or Eve Overmind. Because Eve Overmind is the tool I've become accustomed to using, that's what I'm going to be showing off here, but in the description of the video I will leave a link to both of the tools. Alright, let's talk using Eve Overmind. 
Now, the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to click into our local chat window and control A. So click control A to select all. Then we're going to control C to copy to our clipboard and quickly alt tab here to Eve over mind. It's just in a web browser. Uh, we paste our local chat in there and hit submit. And this is going to give us a quick breakdown of everything in local with us. Now you can see all of the pilots who are in local. You can see their corp, so immediately that's pretty good intel. We can see, okay, there's five people from the Corinth clan in local with us. And generally, Eve Overmind uh, will order this by how much PvP experience a particular pilot might have. So uh, people with a bit more experience are going to go more towards the top. People who have little or no experience in PvP are going to go down the bottom. So, for example, these two characters, they're either very new characters, like just created in the last few weeks, I suppose, or they're people who have just literally never PvP'd. So that's why there is no data on them there. Uh, you can see here a breakdown for different metrics and numbers on the, on the uh, pilots. You can see, for example, Sino counts here, so this is quite useful. Uh, you know, basically how likely this character might be to drop a Blops on us. Um, if we mouse over these things here, we can see an explanation of what this actually is. So you might wonder what aggression is, that's going to sort of tell you a bit about that. Uh, you've got risk taking here as well. Uh, that generally tells you how often a pilot will fight above their tier. Uh, we can also go and inspect the pilot here so let's click on Kim Carson's and if that uh, that will bring up basically a bunch of their recent fits so we can quickly go and click on this we can see okay they were flying an exploration uh, frigate uh, they were flying a stabber which was yeah a PvP stabber so you know you can quickly go and see a bunch of their fits like if I was about to fight this hook bill I could go and have a look at this and say Okay, it's a light missile hook bill, so I know it's a kitey hook bill, uh, and you know theoretically maybe they're using the same fit again because people often do do that. Uh, so that is Eve Overmind. That is how we can get a little bit more intel on who is in local with us. In factional warfare and indeed in most PvP situations in EVE, combat can be broken down into three different methods of engaging targets. To begin to truly grasp the art of PvP in New Eden, pilots should try to become proficient in all three styles of flying. Brawling, which involves quickly closing the distance on your target, getting right in their face and fighting mano y mano. Scram kiting, which requires a pilot to hold their distance at the edge of their scram range where they can mitigate the fierce damage of brawling setups. And kiting, which involves keeping well outside of scram range whilst maintaining tackle from your long point and doing damage from distance. All three styles of flying have their own strengths and weaknesses, and the key to each is imposing your particular strengths on your opponent. To be an effective brawler, you need primarily two things. One is you're going to need a pretty decent tank, and the other is that you're going to need some speed, particularly in factional warfare, where you're going to be fighting a lot of the time whilst webbed and scrammed, so you're going to need a way to catch these other AB fitted ships. So with this breacher here, I just need to get as close as possible. I know that with my fit and using this overdrive injector here, which you can see the uh, icon for the module for in my in my fit there. Uh, I know I can actually catch him and apply my damage. Uh, unfortunately, we're then caught by this Estero who has uh, neutered us out here, so we are not long for this world. Now, basically, the key to really all PvP in EVE is actually range control, and that is being able to be in distance to apply your damage whilst maybe trying to mitigate some of your opponents. Uh, so here we're going in on a Tristan Merlin, uh, but it looks like the Merlin has actually left, uh, so maybe these guys weren't together. Uh, the Tristan was sitting quite far off the beacon, so I think he's probably uh, MWD fit, 
So I'm trying to catch him as quick as I can. Uh, it doesn't look like he actually activates his micro warp drive for some reason. And we're just able to catch him here, which basically means he's going to be face melted by our blasters. Uh, yeah, so once we're able to get in range here, we can just kill him very, very quickly. Uh, you can see that my Merlin here is dual web fit. Now this is another way for you to get some range control on a brawler, uh, or indeed on like a scram kiter. Um, but the Merlin's not particularly quick like the Incursus, uh, but by having dual webs, that means that I can catch other AB fitted ships. So, as I mentioned before, the general idea of scram kiting is to fight at roughly the edge of your scram range. Uh, this means that hopefully you can mitigate a bit of the incoming damage that you're going to be receiving. Uh, as a general rule, you could say that the closer that you get to a given ship, the more damage that it's going to apply to you. Uh, obviously that's a very simplistic rule, that's not going to apply in every case, uh, but if we were fighting say a brawler here, and we're able to pull range to the edge of our scram, then that brawler may not even be able to hit us at all. Uh, as we're fighting another scram kiter here, this is pretty much just a straight DPS slash tank race. Uh, but a few things that we want to look out for when we're scram kiting is uh, going and fighting things that could potentially be dual web. That is some fights that we maybe want to think about avoiding. Uh, so things like hookbills, things like merlins, uh, they can generally fit dual webs. So, you know, we want to be a little bit careful when engaging those, uh, particularly in something like a tormentor, which a dual web ship could easily uh, latch onto, and then basically they're going to orbit us very tightly, uh, which will then out-track our guns, and we won't be able to hit them. Uh, you can see we did get the job done on the breacher there. Uh, now we have a hookbill, and we're going up against a Fed Navy Comet. Uh, now this Comet is sitting right on the beacon, which makes me think that he is, uh, is blaster fit. Uh, unfortunately, I kind of hit the wrong hotkey, and I start approaching him here, so that's maybe not the best start already. Uh, I am going to look at his ship here, so that I can see his guns. Now if you see on the guns there, the little yellow stripes, that actually tells me that he is in fact rail fit. Uh, so I don't know why he was sitting at zero there, but uh, that's what he was doing. Uh, unfortunately, in the video, uh, in the game there, I didn't actually realise that he was rail fit. I still thought he was blaster fit. Uh, so in a minute here, I think I try and pull like an orbit on him. Uh, I didn't realise I was approaching at this point. Uh, maybe making a few mistakes here, but there you go. We do try and pull orbit on uh, the comet. Uh, so that would be the general idea if he was uh, blaster fit. Unfortunately, again, that's a bit of a tank DPS race, and we lose out on that one. Kiting involves keeping range on your opponents whilst doing damage from distance and trying to maintain your long point. Now that can be a little bit difficult, as we can see in this clip here, uh, when we have multiple opponents on field. So we have to worry about the position of both of these guys and can't just sort of stick our orbit on one of them. So you can see this Punisher is starting to get a little bit close. I take a look at his position, then I look at the sun and I see, okay, I can align out to the sun to just break my orbit up a bit here. Then when I pull range, I can re-establish my orbit on this Incursus and go back to work on him. Now, one of the advantages of kiting is that we can take on multiple opponents. So if we were a brawler or a scram kiter, we would be in range of this incursus and we wouldn't be able, or well, the damage here would probably be too much for us. Uh, but because we are a kiter, we are able to get some kill mails here that we wouldn't be able to get as a scram kiter or as a brawler. Now, one of the real tricks to kiting is when you land at zero on someone, like with this Griffin Navy issue here. So he has landed his scram here, which has deactivated my MWD. I'm trying to get that back on. I have now reactivated that, and hopefully I'll be able to pull some range on this guy, even though he is MWD fit as well. Uh, but it does look like I'm a little bit quicker than him here, so I am able to start pulling some range, and uh, when we do that, we can hopefully break this jam. Uh, so that is, again, 
one of the advantages of kiting is we can fight these ECM guys, which we definitely can't do in a brawler. And in a scram kiter, it's basically up to RNG as to whether we're going to win that fight. Uh, so I've managed to re-engage my tackle here, um, but it is quite difficult to hold these guys because they're MWD fit. So you can see I'm now approaching him again, but I've probably done that a little bit too late. And uh, he is perhaps trying to get away here. You can see he's probably aligning out to the sun. And in fact, he has broken my tackle and does manage to get away. Uh, but that is the basics of kiting and a few of the common situations and targets that we will find in Factional Warfare LOSEC. So how can we start to learn to PvP as a character on a free-to-play account? Well obviously everything that we've discussed so far still certainly applies for free-to-play tunes. But of course, there's a few things that you should keep in mind given the racial and skill limitations of Alpha Clones. In terms of solo PvP, there's no doubt that as an Alpha Clone you are playing on hard mode. But that being said, you can still definitely find kills and learn the skills that will pay dividends in the future should you decide to upgrade your account. Probably the best way for you to find success on your own will be flying something that's a hard counter to a commonly used fit. I could see something like a dual web Kestrel or Merlin working well in the hands of an Alpha Clone, or you could just fit a new Tristan and go and wreck anything that uses Cap. Of course, another and perhaps more obvious way you can get Alpha kills is if you roam as a small gang. If you've got two or three mates who you can rope into playing EVE with you, you guys can have an absolute blast roaming together and even as free to play or lower skilled characters can definitely start taking on bigger and more dangerous targets and certainly give yourself the opportunity to get on some nice kill mails. There are also many great Nubro orientated corps who will take low skilled characters and where you can find regular roams, PvP classes, and veteran players who will make themselves available to mentor new pilots. EVE University, the Black Shark Cult, and Abanda Parts Vagrant Skies are some of the better corps for low skill and alpha clone PvP in LOSEC, where you can learn the tricks of the trade and how to start wreaking some havoc. I hope that this guide has been helpful to you, and I hope that you are blessed with good fights anytime you find yourself undocked and roaming the skies of New Eden. If you have questions about PvP, you can leave a comment here, or the next time you're in space, maybe you'll contact Captain Ace Rico. Until then, or until I see you in a future video, remember, as always, Fly dangerous.